look to see if there's less than seven bricks out here which I just threw some out if there's less than seven you flip these tiles and it shows you plus ones on different uh, color gates there so you've got yellow black blue and red and then white in the middle so uh, fill those up until you have at least 14 bricks out there then if you have less than six cards here and this deck was just shuffled at the beginning you're gonna put six cards out this deck here was just shuffled at the beginning if you have less than 14 cards you're gonna put 14 cards out here and the first player goes and what he does is he takes from his deck he shuffles his deck and everybody has their own deck and it matches the color that they are there's one card in here that does not get used if you play in two or three players it stays in if it's four players you take this one card out otherwise you mix these cards up you draw two you got two in your hand and you can take actions based on the cards here so there are a lot of different actions you can choose from but they have to be on the card that you play and then you're going to just use these action tokens to cover up the action that you're taking on the card so it's worker placement essentially so here's one that has a lot of choices so here's um, four coins you just get four coins and the number of torches down here tells you how many actions you can have on that card Take, four, take three torches. So these are just extra counters over here. Three to, and torches give you, what they do is they give you an extra action on a card. So you can play it on the card and then take another action beyond what it tells you you can. So three torches. This one here gives you a scroll. What is a scroll for? Scroll is for buying these cards over here and these cards all do something different this one gives you an extra Roman and it shows you how many scrolls the card costs here this one gives you another Roman you will run out of Romans you have to spend Romans when you're building your building elements out here this one gives you a torch also this one lets you put an extra gate out of the stash onto a building that you already have in play this one lets you build another building element this one gives you a yellow so you would just take it out of the reserve over here and put it in your on your player mat here you have a section for black blue red yellow and white so that's how you keep track of what color each one is is based on where you have it on your player mat this one is for some end game scoring and this, these, these and these cards are identical except for these have a color of a gate and then one, a, core, a building quarter that matches the picture here. These scoring ones over here do not have a color of a gate next to them. And yeah, that one's wrong too. They just have scrolls to show that you're buying them with scrolls. Now these are worth points at the end of the game and there's no difference between this one and this one at the end of the game they're both worth the same number of points they have the same picture of a building on them these here let you buy gates from the middle so if I took this action which is red I would buy a red gate but I have to be in that quarter to buy that red one so I would have to move and I have to go clockwise. It shows a one-way arrow around here with a coin. So it actually costs me a coin to move over one. Red costs me three coins here. So it would cost me four coins total to buy that one. Now a gray one means any color, but you still have to be in the correct quarter of the city to buy it. So if I want to buy black, I would have to go over there to buy black and pay one plus the two extra for three. Now you'll notice that these colored ones 
once they show that they're out of that color, they become gray. So they become, you can buy any color at that point, and white is available from any of the four quarters. You can buy ones out of the middle, the white ones. The white ones are most expensive. Uh, you'll also notice there's a trading thing here on your player mat. If you have torches, you can trade torches in for a coin, one for one. If you have two scrolls, you can build a building element by, and spending these scrolls is just, there's, that's not an action. It's just a trade, kind of a trade in for doing this. Two scrolls is equal to a Roman, so you can buy a Roman. Uh, a white gate that you have here, you can substitute in when you're building building elements out here. You're going to have to put a certain number of them out. So if you put, if you wanted to put three white, three yellow ones out, but you only have two, you could put the white one in with the yellow ones because it can count as any color. So I think I've covered all of the different actions here that you can get on your card. So what, once you have played a card, you're just going to discard that card after you've taken all the actions on it. Discard that card, pick your action tokens back up, and then draw a new card. So you're always going to have two cards in your hand. Until the end of the round, the end of the round happens when everybody is out of all of their cards in their deck, in their hand. It becomes the next player once you've played your card down and you're done, next player's turn. Now let me show you how to build. So once you have some, let's just say I've got these over here. I've purchased a bunch of gates and I want to take this action to build. I'm over here so I would have to build in that quarter unless I move to a different quarter. This shows you a color and a quantity of gates that you had to put there. So this is two yellow. And I only have one yellow, so I could not build there. I, this is, has two red, so I could build two red. And you could put it on either one you want. That's two red. You immediately put a Roman on top to show that those are the ones you built. That's worth seven victory points at the end of the game. No, that's worth seven victory points. And so you would move up seven victory points from zero. You've got an action token on zero. Go up to seven. You also, if you have a multiple of three gates out here, at least three or more, then you have a reward. Now, I only put two down. But if I come back around on my next turn and build again and put me a new Roman, that now has four gates out there which is more than three so I would get this reward and so this that accumulates you just keep track every time you build you want to count your gates up to see if you've uh, gone over a multiple of three to get your reward this gives you a Roman and a torch here's a Roman and five coins here's two Romans and a scroll here is a white gate and that white gate would come out of the supply and go on your board. There is one more thing you need to watch for when you're building. You watch for these cards over here because here is the Basilica and this one's blue. So if I built a blue gate at the Basilica I would get this card. So you need to make sure you're watching these cards and it's the beginning of the action phase. Remember at the beginning, the refill phase when you replace those. Otherwise, they just stay empty until the very end of the round. Once you get to the end of the round, everybody's out of cards. You, do, you need to uh, do end of round scoring. So what you do is you count up all the bricks that you have out here and if you're playing a three or four player game you're gonna double that if you're playing a two player then you just you do not double and then each player gets to uh, take victory points a combination of victory points and coins equal to the number of bricks that they have built out bricks or gates 
Same, same thing. Then whoever has the fewest victory points, he gets to decide who the first player is going to be in the next round, and they can choose themselves if they want to. You're going to move the round marker. You notice here that there's only two rounds in the game. Unless you're playing a two-player, then you go to three rounds. You're going to shuffle your action deck. You're going to redraw two cards, and you're ready for the next round. where you're going to look to see if there's less than seven here. If there is, you're going to draw these cards until you get to 14. If there's less than six building cards, you're going to refill those. If there's less than 14 honor cards, you're going to refill those to 14. And then at the end, the game ends at the end of the last round. Otherwise, the game can end prematurely if there are no bricks here to buy, there are no bricks in the reserve, then, or if a player has placed 15 building elements out. So 15, the way you keep track of that is you only have 15 Romans. So once you're completely out of Romans, that would end the game, and you would get a 5-point bonus for ending the game early, or if there are no bricks available on your turn, then that would end the game early also. Uh, all other players then would get one final turn. Then you do your scoring. And the way scoring works is these cards here, uh, over here, these building cards, and the, the scoring cards over here, they are identical. The first one of a building is worth two points. If you have two different buildings are worth six, three different buildings are worth 12, four different buildings is worth 20. And then you'll notice that some of these cards over here, you could discard. The 30 point ones over here, they have you discard one of each building and it does not matter whether the building came from over here or if it came from over here, it does not matter. So essentially it was worth 20 points because you had four different ones and you're going to discard those four plus the two scrolls to get a card that's worth 30 at the end of the game. And then the 31 can be traded in for a 42 one the 42 one can be traded in for a 56 one, this 56 one here. So there's a 42. So the end game scoring, the way that works is you score sets of building cards. So that's these right here. You do your final scoring card. So any cards that have points on them, such as these, you um, get one victory point for every Roman that you have over here in front of you that you have not placed out on the board. You get one point for every influence token, so your scrolls. One point for every torch. One point for every brick that you still have over here that you have not used. You get one point for every three coins over here that you have. And then you get majority scoring. The way majority scoring works is you're going to count the, the number of bricks you have in that quarter. Whoever has the most here at the city wall gets 20 points bonus. Second most gets 10. At the Basilica, on row, this is separate, at row A, you're going to add up. Whoever has the most gets this bonus. Whoever has second most gets that bonus. The B row, same thing. The uh, amphitheater has three rows an A, B, and a C, and they all have their own bonuses there. The Porta Negra is different. It's based on the height. So if whoever has the most eights out there would have a, a 30, get 37 points. Whoever has second most would get 18. And if there's a tie, so let's say there's two people that have eights out there, you're going to get the most valuable eight will will be the tiebreaker. And then whoever has the most sevens, who has the most sixes, the fives, the fours, and the threes 
So then that's going to add up more victory points around the board. You're just going to keep track of that by moving your token around the board. And there are tokens with plus 100, plus 200 for when you cycle around the board. Keep track of that to keep, keep track of if you pass the 100 mark. And so the game simply ends with who has the most points is going to be the winner. So that is how you play Porta Nigra, put out by Stronghold Games. And I can't say enough positive things about this, uh, the great designer series. I've played several of these now, and they are, every single one of them has been very fun to play. Very interesting, very different, uh, along with this one. Wolfgang Kramer and Michael Kessling designed this one. Make sure you tune into all of our videos at the Board Game Network and uh, like the videos. Let us know if you've played this game, um, what you think of it. Make sure you always leave comments down below. We always like seeing your comments. That way we can have an idea on what you're interested in 